Thanks for joining me here on the Nepali coast. This is a catamaran. We will be out for about five and a half hours total. It's already been halfway through. This is a time when you need to use sunscreen. And when it comes to sunscreen, it's so confusing. There are chemical sunscreens and there are physical sunscreens. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the issues around sunscreen whether it's protecting you or protecting the sea life. So we'll cover all that and more in this video. Welcome, I'm Amberlynn Vital. Before we get started, do you see that red subscribe button in the lower right corner of your screen? Click on that now or at any point in this video to make sure that you're signed up to receive all new content that we provide for you here on Amberlynn Vital, hoping to move the needle on your health and wellness. And if you wanna skip ahead to the product recommendations, please scroll down through the description information below to find the products that I think are the best for both your health and the health of the environment. Now let's talk about the sun and our skin. I wouldn't say that I'm exactly a sun worshiper, but I love to be outside and I love to be active and that often puts me out in the sun a lot longer than my skin can actually handle and that brings us to what is called sun protection factor SPF that you see on sunscreens is basically a factor of how many times longer you can spend in the sun without seeing damage but what you don't know is it refers to both superficial damage that you see as sunburn and also deeper damage that you don't see today, but you'll see it in years to come, and that's what they think really contributes to skin cancer. So what does sunscreen actually protect against? It should protect against both ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B rays, UVA and UVB. But most, and well, I can't say most, but many sunscreens only protect against UVB. In other words, they keep you from getting a sunscreen, a sunburn at those superficial layers. Only some sunscreens protect against UVA, which is that deeper penetrating wavelength that causes damage over the years. You really want both. So what is in a sunscreen that gives it an SPF? There are chemical blockers and physical blockers. Chemical blockers, there's five main chemicals that contribute to that, and that is oxybenzone, octinoxate, and then octisalate, octocrylene, and avobenzone. <sighs> Putting that up on the screen because I can't even remember them all, so don't expect to. You can look them up. The problem with oxybenzone and octinoxate is that they damage reefs. They've definitely been linked to coral reef bleaching and damage. In Hawaii, they have banned them. So by 2020, they're out of sunscreens that you can use in Hawaii. And that should really be the case anywhere there's a marine environment to be protected. The other three, the problem is how do they interact when exposed to excessive UV rays? and to maybe even salt water, and definitely to chlorine and bromine in pools. We don't really know. So let's just ditch those. Almost all dermatologists recommend a physical sunscreen over chemical. What's a physical sunscreen? Zinc and titanium, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. So what about those two? They can cover together both UVA and UVB rays. And with titanium dioxide, you get a clearer product. And so a lot of people like that, but there are problems with titanium dioxide. What's wrong with titanium dioxide? Well, in the first place, it doesn't actually successfully block all the UVA rays, the ones that go deep. So while it can lend to a higher SPF, it's not really helping you anymore with long-term damage. Also, titani titanium dioxide doesn't biodegrade that well in the environment but in the warmer waters, it can turn into hydrogen peroxide, which is really toxic to all aquatic life. So let's ditch the titanium dioxide too. So what about zinc oxide? Zinc oxide is actually our best choice. It protects against the full spectrum of both UVA and UVB rays. So sunburn today and skin damage tomorrow. And up to about a 25% concentration, which you can find written on the back in the ingredients in products, you will actually be able to get about a 35 SPF, which is pretty good. You don't get higher than that unless you add titanium dioxide, but we really wanna leave that out if at all possible. And what about non-nano versus nano zinc oxide? 
So nano zinc oxide can go on clearer and you might like that, but it is damaging to the environment and can be really bad when inhaled. We want to protect our skin and we want to look good, but we don't want to do it at the cost of the environment. And really, if we're damaging marine life, we are changing climate and changing climate and changing atmosphere affects how strong the sun is. Even young people in Hawaii when we were there were saying the sun is stronger than it was when I was a kid. It hurts more. It's harder to protect yourself against. Things are changing. So what about other ingredients in your sunscreen? The part that is written in very small letters down below here. So sticks and pastes are good because they have really stable oils like mango seed butter, shea nut butter, uh, cacao seed butter, and even like jojoba oil and coconut oil. A lot of these are very solid even at higher temperatures and that means they don't oxidize as much. If you see sunflower and safflower oil, it's okay but it should be further down in the ingredients because those are easily oxidizable in the heat and at the solar radiation. Definitely avoid canola, definitely avoid cheap oils, corn oils, things like that. You shouldn't even be shopping for those at all. In sprays and lotions, you'll often see more of the sunflower safflower and you'll also see aloe vera quite frequently because it helps it to be spreadable and give it that texture. So what about sprays? Well, sprays can get in your eyes, sprays can get in your mouth, sprays can get in your neighbor's eyes and mouth, sprays can bother your neighboring beachgoer or boater when the wind blows it onto them. Nobody likes that. So it's not good beach etiquette to use a spray on a windy day, number one. Plus there can be propellants and there can be other chemical ingredients in a spray that are again damaging to the environment. A lot of sprays use those nanoparticles, bad for your lungs, bad for the environment. So if you use a spray, be conscientious. Use it in a ventilated area with no wind and alone before you get to the beach. This is why pastes and lotions and creams and sticks are really the best option once you're already outdoors. Now for aftercare. The raw elements and the raw love sunscreens that are listed in the description section below, they left my skin feeling really soft and supple and protected even after a day in the sun and the salt water. I suspect it's the jojoba seed oil, the shea butter, mango butter, and different antioxidants in there like moringa seed and coffee seed and green tea and uh, I don't know, there was a whole bunch of stuff in there, vitamin E and a lot of essential oils that seem to contribute to your skin doing better after you've been in the sun. So look for those kinds of ingredients in your aftercare product. This is actually mango seed butter, which is very hard unless you're really out on a hot day. It only liquefies at a higher temperature. It's oily going on but it really is nice on the skin and it's a great nourishment for the skin when it gets dry after sun and salt and chlorine and bromine exposure. And it's stable, it doesn't oxidize. So those seed fats that are you know, solid at room temperature, they don't oxidize and therefore they don't cause more free radical damage to your skin. So look for those kinds of ingredients listed in the description below. So to sum up, Ditch those chemical sunscreens. No octocrylene, no avobenzone, no octisalate, no oxybenzone, no octinoxate. Just ditch them completely. They might be convenient, but they might be bad for you and they are bad for the environment. Titanium dioxide, ditch it. Bad for the environment and doesn't even offer you all the protection you need. So go with zinc oxide in concentrations between 15 and 25% in your product listed on the back. Make sure if it is a nanoparticle, it's above 35 nanometers and you may have to contact the company to find that out or just go for non-nano and rub it in really good. Try to focus on pastes and sticks and pastes like these, though you have to really work them in, they have a better profile of protection and these tins 
are more recyclable. It's not more plastics winding up in our oceans, which is again, you may know, a huge problem. So this is really the best way to use it. And then a stick, even if it leaves a more white residue, can be good for really exposed areas over the long term. And if you're out so long that you need more sun protection over a full day, just put on a rash guard like this so that you can cover up your whole body and put on a hat and put on a sarong. Do something to cover yourself up so you can still stay outside and enjoy the sun without damaging your skin. So while I might be at the beach today, sunscreen is not only for being at the beach or at the pool, it's also for hiking, mountain biking, skiing, any outdoor you know, activity, sports events, for example, that you might be at where you need protection for longer than 20 to 30 minutes, right? So get out and enjoy the outdoors, protect yourself, but consider the environment as well. And one more thing, if you've been covered up with sunscreen or clothing all day long, you haven't made any vitamin D. And that's a problem for your health short term and long term. So please now, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button so that you will be notified when I put out my video on vitamin D3. Remember that I always encourage you to shop at local retailers, but if you are already on Amazon shopping and you purchase a product through the links that we have below, those are affiliate links and I actually get support for this channel so that we can keep researching and bringing important information like this to you for free. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, remember to live long, live strong and make a difference.